clinical examination of a case of foot drop. And as we have been seeing in lower extremity cases, I think the first and the foremost is examination with the patient walking. Such patients usually walk with a high stepping gait, which is predominantly due to the loss of dorsiflexor clearance in the swing phase. So since the foot cannot be dorsiflexed to allow for ground clearance, the knee and the hip, they flex more than the normal side. And this gives rise to the classical description of a high stepping gait. Well, to elucidate this further, I am showing you a, a, a video of the of a case of the foot drop in a child and you can see that the dorsiflexor clearance is not there on the right side of this particular patient and which is creating a high stepping gait. Well, once we have noticed high stepping gait and the patient has complained that he is unable to dorsiflex the foot and we have also demonstrated it by asking the patient to try and dorsiflex and we find that he is unable. Now is the time that we need to perform muscle testing procedures and to recapitulate the anatomy we need to examine certain pertinent muscles supplied by number one the deep peroneal nerve and secondly the superficial peroneal nerve because if you by your knowledge of anatomy you would be able to decipher that as soon as the common peroneal nerve reaches the neck of the fibula and it pierces the peroneus longus muscle it divides into its two terminal divisions the deep peroneal nerve and the superficial peroneal nerve. The superficial peroneal nerve is responsible for supplying the peroneus longus and the bravis muscles whereas the deep peroneal nerve supplies the tibialis anterior, the extensor digitorum longus, the extensor hallucis longus and the peroneus tertius. It also supplies the extensor digitorum brevis. But since it is not possible to test this muscle clinically, I have included only those muscles which you need to test clinically and to be able to decipher what is the grade of power on the Medical Research Council grading. So, uh, if you, we would be separately demonstrating the technique of demonstrating each one of these muscles. Please do not forget to examine the muscles supplied by the tibial nerve also because it is quite common that a patient of sciatic nerve injury may only be having a common peroneal nerve deficit. However, a minor degree or a total tibial nerve paralysis may also be concomitantly present, especially in high injuries in the buttock, which like the ones which are created by a posterior dislocation of the hip or a fracture dislocation of the hip or a wrong site injection in the buttock. The muscles which are to be tested for tibial nerve are the gastrosoleus and tibialis posterior muscle. Well, the tibialis posterior muscle is also important to for, for, for being able to decide. Tibialis posterior muscle testing is important also for the management part because this is one of the most important muscles which can be used for a tendon transfer procedure when surgery on the peripheral nerve or the common peroneal nerve 
is not possible. Once the motor testing is has been accomplished, it would be time now for sensory testing and one must realize that the dorsal aspect of the foot is supplied by the common peroneal nerve but the more important sensory deficit in a foot drop case is deciphered by testing the sensation in an area of skin overlying the first dorsal web space. As far as the tibial nerve is concerned, it is responsible for sensation in the sole and please do not forget to examine sensation in the sole because there would be cases in which both the tibial as well as the common peroneal nerve would be involved but the patient presents only as a foot drop case.